Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we shall be getting naughty. Well, that was unexpected. Yes, today is part two of decorative knots for aesthetic floor shibare. And we will be doing things a little bit different because I am going to be giving you these tools and then I want you to make something out of it. Tag me on Instagram, tag me on Twitter, preferably Instagram, a little bit easier that way, and show me what you make out of these. Bonus points if you use more than just one of these knots inside your rig. You can add them to a harness that has already existed that maybe I've already taught or you're already aware of, or maybe creating something entirely different or new or unique. I wanna see your creations and later on, on, I'll show you what I made. Before we get into those knot tutorials, we must talk about safe, sane, and consensual safety. Be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get a new rope. Can't get a new life. And consensual. Marie and I are both consenting adults. Communication is key. Let us proceed, but first, we must thank my sponsor for today, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code RORY10 for 10% off. Now the first knot we will be exploring inside of this is going to be the friendship knot. Aww. I tend to have a very hard time convincing people that I am not a Boy Scout, and this knot is not going to help that in the slightest. As you can see, it has a little bit of a, uh, what seems to be like a shuriken or kind of pinwheel look to it, and it really is a transitional knot, because I have one rope coming down this way and one rope going this way, and so they come together and continue on their ways. Let me break it down and show you the anatomy of what this knot really is. Undoing the knot slowly so everything's not super weird. So when we break it down, this is essentially what the knot is doing. It's creating basically a weave. This, the the wheat rope wants to be going down. The yellow rope wants to be going down and this forest green rope wants to be going horizontally. They meet each other, weave inside of each other, and then just tighten up. So let's start from the beginning. So we're gonna bring our horizontal rope across. And what we're going to do is turn it into a wave. It takes some getting used to actually putting this into a harness and it requires a little bit of uh, multitasking. Now the rope that is coming down from the harness is going to go underneath this first rope and then double over. So it goes beneath this first one and then over the next two, which is the exact opposite of weaving, but it does even itself out. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna go under, double over. Then it's gonna go under, over, under. So the classic weave right there, under, over, under. So we have uh, non-classic, classic, and this one will be non-classic again because this rope will come over, over, under. So in a very interesting way, we have a non-classic weave, classic weave, non-classic weave. These two, the non-classics, are opposite of each other. So we go under, double over. Then we go to the classic weave. Since we went over, we need to go under, over, under. Then the opposite of this side. We're gonna go over, 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 under. So this was under, over, over. This one will be over, over, under. Now they have to make sure that they stay pretty properly. I like to pull from the different color sides, horizontal and then vertically. Pull the two ends as well. It's kind of a pain in the ass one to uh, tighten. Believe me. But once you do, you have yourself a friendship knot. The knot is so friendly. And the knot can be super finicky. Oh my God, it can be super finicky. It takes some time to get used to it. This is one of the ones I like to untie and then tie over and over again to make sure that I have it right. Because not only is the tying process a little bit odd, but the tightening process is odd. Because if you just tighten super quickly, once you have it all weaved through, it can undo itself because one part will flip over itself and once you tighten it that way, then it is way off and it is pretty and it is a knot that you can use to really give a little bit of heightened uh, feel and a little bit of a beautiful aesthetic feel to any rig but man is it finicky 
Let me try and do it from the other way. It will start with our horizontal knot. We have our knot coming down this way, and then we just loop and loop. So this side's gonna come this way. It's gonna start by going under, over, over, and then normal, so non-classic weave, under, over, over. We're gonna do the uh, classic weave. So since we went over, we must go under, over, under. One goes under, the other must go over. So say the Rory. Now, start of a classic weave here. We'll go over and then over again and under because it will be the exact opposite than this side. So this side went under, over, over. This side will go over, over, under. <gasps> yes. Tighten that slowly, and we will have ourselves another friendship knot. Let's move on to the next one. Next, we have something I affectionately call the starburst knot. Uh, it's actually very difficult. I've, I've been trying to find the actual name for it, and I can't, uh, which is weird. Anyone knows it, please comment down below. I would like to know. Now look at how pretty that looks. It is nice. It's just an aesthetically pleasing thing. Oh boy, do I enjoy it. And one of the things is that uh, this is, can commonly be used in like the middle of a harness, like say this will go onto the sternum. These two will go around the shoulders. These two will go over the breasts, under the breasts, and this one going down. If you want a groin one or not, that's up to you. You can lessen the amount of these that there are. When you start having more and more of them, they tend to get a little bit difficult to uh, tighten in on this weave right here. So having one, two, three, four, five, six might be a little much. Having just five, so having the two that go over the shoulders, two over the breast under the armpits, and two under the breasts around the ribs will probably be the better option. Um, so that's the way I'll show you. I like having this one because I like having one come out from the groin and pull down as well. I'll show the one with just uh, five. How about that? So let's start from the beginning on that one. So we will take the bite of our rope, the middle of our rope, and it feels weird not immediately saying putting a girth hitch immediately after that. So we're gonna spread it out and then we're basically gonna cut it in half. Put two fingers here, reach in, whoop. That just makes it easy to create these things. So we got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and another. So we have our one, two, three, four, five loops. And then these two are the uh, continuation of the ropes, which is why they go off that way. Uh, the easiest way to start is to take the two ropes that are not a part of the loops and we're going to put them over this one. Tighten it up. The closer you get it down towards the center, the probably the better it's going to be when it comes to tightening. A little bit, a little bit easier. So that is essentially what you have created. This one, the two continuation of the ropes, the two tails, go over this one, go over this loop right here. This loop is going to go over it and then it's also going to go over the next one. And that's essentially the pattern that we do from here. So this next loop is going to go over the one that just went over it, and it's also going to go over the next one. This one right here is going to go over the one that just went over it, and over the next one. We'll grab the next one, it'll go over the one that just went over it, and over the next one. The next one in question will go over the one that just went over it, and then we have this little circle right here. We're going to go through that circle. Now what we need to do is tighten. It's important to make sure that your uh, ropes stay uh, straight or else it'll make it harder. So we're gonna take the tails of the rope and we're gonna tighten up a bit. And then we're just gonna take the next loop. We're gonna tighten that up. Take the next loop, tighten that up. Next loop, we're gonna tighten that up. Tighten, tighten. So we're gonna start tightening again. We're gonna tighten here. And then we're gonna go the opposite way. We're gonna tighten, we're gonna tighten holding down the ones, uh, the knots that we just came from, the ones that we just tightened from. Gonna tighten that one, then we're gonna tighten this one, and that one, and then the tails of the rope again. You'll know you have it right when you have the pattern of over and then through, over and then through, over and then through, and so on and so forth. A whole lot of overs and throughs, like people are grabbing arms with each other. It's a beautiful sentiment. And yeah, put that in the sternum, in the middle of a harness. Spread that back out again. So you would have top of the sternum and the neck right here. These would go over the shoulders. This would go over the breasts, under the armpits, and these would go under the breasts around the ribs. And basically what you do with these other ropes is start connecting. You would connect down first here, then here, 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 here. You connect those all in the middle on the back. Tighten it up. Bada bing, bada boom. Starburst knot. Super fun. I love it. Up next, we have the Celtic ring knot. And already, yeah, 
that looks very aesthetically pleasing. This is technically a twofer because halfway through the process of making this one is a perfectly acceptable tri-circle Celtic knot. A Triskelion, albeit an open Triskelion, seeing how it's not closed. Anyway, let's get started with this one. It's a fun one. Now this can be done with just one rope, but I'm doing it with the, the two different colors just so uh, you can illustrate how it is tied just a little bit better. The green's gonna be our outside of it, the yellow on the inside. I really hope you guys enjoy this one. It's, it's super fun. The first thing we are going to do, we are going to create the loopy. I'm gonna give myself a lot of room. So we're gonna create one loopy, then we're going to create a second loopy. And the loopy's not gonna weave through any of these right now. It's just gonna go over both of them, but it is gonna go under this one right here. And similar to the heart knot, we're gonna weave through that way. Now we got our nice little pretzel all set up. This rope is going over this one. This one is depressed. When we have a depressed rope and we're weaving through, we want to uplift that one. So in order to go under that one, to lift it up, means we have to go over this one. So we're gonna send these bad boys over, under, over and under. What has gone over must go under, so saith the Rory. Now that right there, as I turn it over, is gonna be the tricircle Celtic knot, the uh, open-ended Triskelion. That's not where we're gonna finish, so I'm gonna turn it back over so it's facing me again. I am going to send the, uh, the lengths of my rope and give my tails a lot more room. So I'm just gonna pull through here because I'm not gonna get the opportunity easily enough uh, later on. So you basically give yourself room, go through the entirety of the nut, give yourself more. All right, so that is essentially where we left off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these up a little bit and bring these to the top. And this may seem almost confusing at first, but trust me, uh, it is not. Essentially, I'm gonna reach under here and I'm gonna reach this one and I'm gonna create two additional loopies right here. Let me show you that again. I'm gonna reach underneath, grab this one, and I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna tighten them up a little bit to create two additional loopies right here. Cool, so I have created two additional loopies. Now we're gonna take the tails and we're gonna weave through there. So we're gonna go over, under, over, under, because this one's depressed and that one's depressed. They need to be uplifted, so we have to have something underneath it. Bring it up. So our tails are gonna go over this, under here. They're gonna go over this, and under here. Now notice that I did not, when I came here, I did not flip over and go that way. That would disrupt the harmony of the green being on the outside. So when we went over, we basically just turned it around as opposed to flipping it over. So we'll turn it around, go over and under. That is essentially it. Now. We're going to uh, just, I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. Tighten it up a little bit, flip it over, and there we go. We have our Celtic ring knot. Now for this, say you have a rig that is coming down towards the groin, and then you can uh, create one, you can create this Celtic ring knot, but you can also create the tricircle knot, the open-ended uh, Triskelion, and then back up to do other things on the other side of the rig. So coming down like a V-plate. So like take my V-plate harness, for example. You could come down this way uh, with the rope that is weaving in and out of it and then create the Celtic ring knot and go back up. Technically a little bit different from my V-plate harness, but yeah, it is semantics. So imagine that kind of design, something that's coming down and then going back up. Like say the Bahamut tie, where instead of going down to the groin and around it, or uh, beneath the legs, you would come down, create the Celtic ring knot and go back up. You would later have a rope that goes beneath the legs, comes here, latches through one of these, like this one right here, and then comes down around the legs again. That way it gives you these two ropes to do the Bahamut tie half hitches over, creating that half hitch corset. There's so many things you can do with these knots. They're so decorative, they're so fun, they draw the eye to them, and they're just <sighs> so gosh darn aesthetically pleasing. I hope you enjoy doing them. Be sure to practice, practice, practice. Well, hey, I hope you had as much fun learning from those tutorials as I did teaching them to you. Marie has decided that she was going to try her hand at making a harness out of these knots and sending it to my Instagram, and I just thought that she took rope out of here and she wasn't going to tie herself up. I'm right here right now, so she's not going to tie me up. Who is she going to tie? Oh, the cats! Uh, um, 
Okay, uh, first uh, we got to thank our other wonderful sponsors for today, the lovely people at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rory's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of rope bondage things you would like me to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is my brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art. Oh, God. Marie!